Yeah, just that. God. Nice hand. We're back in the 1-3 game, buying for $500. First hand we get is ace-queen, open for a raise, get three callers, can't go past the flop. Next hand, I get two jacks. Go ahead, open for a raise, get three callers. Flop comes out, the glorious queen high. It gets checked to the player on the button who ended up having ace-queen. The small blind also called with a hand that was king-queen. And of course, to rub it in, after I fold the correct fold, a jack comes on the turn. Would have won a big pot. Finally, I pick up another good hand. In the cutoff, this time I have ace-king offsuit. There is a $6 straddle. One player limps in. I raise to 35. It's folded back around to the limper, who doesn't have a very big stack. And he does the old limp re-raise. Okay. Usually indicative of a very strong hand, but let's face it, I got ace-king, and he has a short stack. The chips are just going to be getting in there. So I think for a second and shove it in. What the heck? My opponent snap calls and we get to see that he has ace king of hearts. So he only has one flush draw. I have two. I should be the favorite. But we ended up chopping this after the flop comes queen, queen, nine and a brick on the turn. Well, it's better than losing, I guess. We go on another long run of good hands and frustrating flops. Here I have ace, 10 of hearts, raise. I get re-raised to 45 from the player in the blind. Of course, I put in the call in position with a pretty good hand. Flop comes out all little and he bets 125. Easy fold. Again, I look down at ace, queen of hearts this time. Flop comes out all clubs. Ace, 10 of diamonds. You guessed it. Four callers, no thing for me. Finally, I get pocket nines in middle position. A, a very strong player to my right opens for a bet for 15. He's been playing extremely snug today. I just call and we get three other players joining us. Five ways to a flop of ace, king, nine. Beautiful, finally flop a set. It's checked to me. I decide to check because the guy in the button was betting everything and he decides to check it back. Turn card comes as a queen of diamonds. Now the strong player leads out for 45. And I'm thinking to myself, well, he could have king, queen, ace, queen. Maybe he slow played something like ace, king. Or I could have been beat all along and he flopped a set of aces or kings or something. I put in the call. The player on the button decides to put in the call. And we get to see a river card. Which comes a complete and utter blank. So with the three of hearts on board, nothing changes. And of course, my opponent to my right leads out for $125. And I'm thinking to myself, um, the way things are going today, he's going to show me pocket queens. I, I guess I should have just bet that flop. Got a little bit trappy, and I think I ended up trapping myself. I put in the call, and then the other opponent ends up folding. Yeah, just that. God. Nice hand. Well, an hour and a half in, I'm already stuck over $580. Pick up pocket jacks in the cutoff. Everyone fold. I decide to raise. Get defended by the small blind. Flop comes out. Eight, seven, five with two hearts. Not the greatest flop. I decided to put in a little bit bigger uh, C bet here for 25. He doesn't think too long before putting in the call. I figure, okay, there's a lot of things I want to see, and a six of hearts is probably the lowest one on my list. He checks. I quickly check it back. River card comes as a five of diamonds. I'm like totally giving up on this, and then he fires out for 55. I'm thinking to myself, is there any chance he has eight, seven here and think it's good? Oh, uh, I don't know. I got a jack of hearts as a blocker. This is a bad call. 
But, you know, I was uh, slightly tilted, I guess. I put in the call. He shows ace of five of hearts. So I'm being steamrolled so far today. Well, let's try ace king this time. I'm stuck about $660, open for a raise. I end up getting three callers. So we're going to go four ways to a flop, and it comes out seven high. There is one heart, but with three players, I don't think I'm going to be leading. I check it. It gets checked around. Turn card comes is pretty interesting. It's a queen of hearts. Now my opponent in the blind leads out for $20. Kind of a small bet. I don't think he has very much. I got a flush draw, two overs. I'm going to put in a little pressure. I'm planning on taking it away from him on the river. Unfortunately, one of the stronger players at the table puts in the cold call for the 60. I'm thinking he has a hand like ace queen, probably not less than king queen. Definitely feels like a top pair type hand. The other player folds out and the player in the blinds puts in the call. Can I get a heart? No, I cannot. It comes the seven of spades. No use trying to blow him off. He only has $220 left, I believe. And after I check it, he just ships it all in. Obviously, he has the best hand. The other player says, well, I don't like, I'm going to run into quads or something. So he ends up folding his hand. And of course, I fold mine. And um, we're getting buried. Well, the game is good and I'm stuck. So I buy an additional $1,000 and get involved in a hand where I'm in the big blind with King Jack suited. Bunch of limpers. I make it 25. And I get one caller from the player at the end of the table. Uh, He's been chasing me down, so is everyone else, because I can't make a freaking hand. And I get a flop that comes jack high. Definitely going to continuation bet here. Put out $25. He doesn't think long before making the call. I'm thinking, okay, what type of hands could he have? King, queen. He could have a jack. King of diamonds comes on the turn. So it brings in a possible flush draw with someone with a jack of diamonds and another diamond. King, queen, it gives top pair. Ace, queen, I'm in deep doo-doo, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a big bet, a pot-sized bet here. If he has something and wants to chase me down, I'm not going to be playing around with some medium-sized bets. I'm just going to put it in big. I kind of want to break the ice and uh, have some chips come my direction. He thinks for a long time and finally folds by flashing a ace. So, interesting card to flash. Well, this next hand is definitely the most interesting hand of the vlog. But before we can go there, I gotta give you a little backstory. And this hand occurred with the same player one week earlier. And I'm in the big blind with ace king suited. He's in middle position, opens for a race to 15. Everybody folds, and it's to me. Most of the time, I re raise with ace king of hearts or ace king. But occasionally, I would put it in my calling range just for balance. Flop comes out king five deuce with two clubs. Excellent flop for my particular hand. It's great for my opponent's range. And he leads for 15 after I check. And I check raise to 45. What am I representing here? I could be there with a flush draw, maybe a king, possibly a set of deuces or fives. He thinks for a little bit and decides to make the call. Looking to continue with a nice card and we get the Ace of Diamonds. So now there's two flush draws out there. I got top two. I'm definitely going to be betting, and I'm going to make it about a pot sized bet. I ended up betting $130. I really want to build a pot. I think by far I'm in the lead at this point. My opponent could be calling with, say, King Queen of Diamonds. He could be on a flush draw with clubs, maybe Ace Queen of Clubs, Ace Jack of Clubs. He might have just took one off with a lone ace of clubs and now made top pair and doesn't know what to do with it. He thinks for some time before deciding on making the call. When he makes the call, I don't believe he has anything like a set like aces or pocket kings. And in that case, it would be a total cooler and I would get stacked. Feels more like a pair and a flush draw. Perhaps he has the same hand as me and is afraid that I might have pocket fives or deuces because I would definitely call with those hands in the blinds and I'll definitely play them fast. River card comes out and it's an interesting one. It's the nine of clubs. So the front door flush gets there and 
I was kind of looking at him and it didn't seem like he really liked it too much. So I'm hoping and I'm thinking that he doesn't have the flush. So I decided about $240 because I wanted to get called by his weaker hands and I don't think he has anything stronger than that. And finally he makes the call. I got ace king. So he shows pocket deuces, takes down this huge pot because uh, a set of deuces always beats top two pair. But another message was sent in this metagame of poker that I play that I will occasionally call with ace-king from out of position or sometimes even in position. You never know. Be unpredictable. This in turn brings us to the hand of the day. I'm in the big blind with nine seven of diamonds. There were a couple limpers and the same player from before opens for a raise in the cutoff to $25. The player in the blind defends. I defend, the other two limpers fold out. So we go three ways to a flop with $82 in the pot. Flop comes out king, nine, eight. There is one diamond. I got second pair, back door straight and flush draws. I check it to the aggressor. He continuations bets for $40. Uh, I like his sizing here. It's a good size, $40, half pot bet into this. It's kind of a wet board, even though there's no direct flush draws, but there are a lot of kind of straight draws out there. Player in the small blind decides to make the call for the 40. And of course, I'm not gonna go anywhere with all my possibilities. So I end up making the call as well. So with $202 in the pot, we see a turn card of a king of diamonds. I now have a flush draw to go along with my second pair. First player checks, I check. Player on the button tanks for a while before making a bet of $60. It's a very interesting side because it kind of wants to get value out of another player, but it's not like I'm saying I got a great hand. It's more like saying maybe I have like something like pocket queens, jacks, or tens, and I just want to get a little value, but I hope nobody raises. And of course, sometimes I can't help but take the bait when I feel like there is a little weakness there. I'm thinking that he doesn't have a king, that he's more prone to having, you know, pocket pairs, tens through queens. So I put in a raise to $300. Now, if he has a king, uh, this is not going to be very uh, worthwhile. But as I said, I think his range is more towards pocket pairs. And he ends up tanking for a very long time and ends up making the fold. He was definitely the player I was worried about. And once he folds, I figured the other guy's gonna throw his junk away. I didn't put him on any kind of a strong hand. And he thinks for maybe about five to 10 seconds and also decides to fold. So we get one through and uh, our stack is heading in the right direction. You guys are gonna have a glimpse of the thought process of my opponent who's sitting at the other end of the table. Uh, he does have his own channel on uh, Instagram and he's going to be starting up a poker vlog in the future. So here are his thoughts on that particular hand. As multiple combinations of pocket eights, pocket nines, and as well as ace king, I've seen this player multiple times, flat call and open with ace king. So there's four combinations of ace king. So I was just ultimately losing to a lot of combinations um, that I thought he could have in his range. So I just mocked because I didn't want to face an all-in shove on the river. Not sure if this was the right play, but it's what I ended up doing. There are so few bluffs in that spot, it is crazy as well. Um, I think he's much more weighted towards a hand like pocket eights or pocket nines. You know, ace-king is also in the range is what I'm trying to explain. So I think if I had ace-king, slam dunk call, but, you know, bluff, the only bluff really there um, is jack-10 suited. You know what I mean? Um, six, seven diamonds or jack-10 of diamonds. Um, those are the only two valid hands that you can be check raising in that spot, I think, at a position like that um, after picking up more equity on the turn. And even then, I don't know if this player is going to be check raising those hands. Um, obviously, he's a really good player, but I don't know if he's balanced in the aspect of check raising draws as much as check raising made hands. Um, definitely put him on a made hand for sure. And all the made hands on that board that would be check raising me um, have me beat. So that is pretty much what my thought process was. Well, I hope you guys check out his channel. He's an up and coming player 
and uh, he's by far much better player than I was at his age. And uh, he's very entertaining, and I wish him all the luck. So if you guys have a chance, check out his channel. And uh, soon there will be a YouTube channel, I hear. Anyway, let's get back to the action. There's a $6 straddle on his hand. We've got a couple limpers in front of us. We look at ace-king offsuit. Putting a race to $40. It's folded around to the first limper who puts in the call. Now, he's been very erratic, uh, making some wild bluffs with uh, complete air. So not really knowing what to expect from him. We get a flop of queen eight five with two hearts. Uh, not the greatest flop, but we do have the ace of hearts and two over cards. He thinks for a little bit and decides to lead out for 60. Not quite sure what this means. Obviously, I'm worried about him having top pair, but I was kind of thinking, would he just lead right out into me like that? I don't know. Maybe he's on some sort of draw, straight draw, flush draw, maybe 6-7, jack-10. I put in the call, and we get a two of hearts on the turn. Well, now I'm losing to all those flush draws, and he just jams all in for 185. Well, I do have the nut flush draw. I still got two overs. I was doing some math, and I figured that to call 185, I need about a little over 30% equity and that's assuming that he has just one pair, like a hand like, say, Queen Jack. If he has a hand like Queen Jack, I got a little over 30% equity. And if he has two pair, I'm toast. If he has flush, I'm toast, basically. I need to make a flush. It's a tough spot, but I also gave him about 10 to 20% that he has stone cold, cold air at this point. And thinking about the way he played some similar hands uh, recently, I'm thinking there's a good chance he's just shoving just a shove with a hand like 6-7, as well as a jack-10 that's not a heart. So after a long thought, I just said, well, I think I'm getting the right price. Let's just see what it comes. It, River is a king of spades. He rolls over queen for a spades. So we needed the help on the river. We make our hand. I ran the math afterwards. We have a little less than 32% equity against his specific hand. So it was a gamble, but it pays off. The following hands against the same opponent. Uh, there is a $6 straddle. I make it 25 with two tens. Player behind me calls. And of course, this player in the $6 straddle puts in the call. The other player folds out after limping in. So we're going three ways to a flop with $85 in the pot. Flop comes out pretty good for my hand. It comes 5-3-3 three, three with two hearts. So we got an over pair, and uh, our opponent that was in the straddle leads right out into us for $28. Not quite sure why he's betting 28. He normally just, you know, bets round numbers when he bets. I think he just had three extra chips in his hand. Anyway, I'm going to put in the call. The player behind us folds. Right now, I'm 99% sure that I have the best hand, and the turn card comes is a nine of hearts. He peeks back at his hand like he's checking to see if he has a heart. Checks to me, I should probably bet this, but I know that he's likely to blast off if a blank comes on the river, so I decided to check it back. River card comes is a two of hearts, kind of a bad card. I don't think he's going to blast off now unless he has a heart. He thinks for only a brief second before assembling a bet of $50. And naturally, once he bets $50, this is a super easy call. He's, he might not even have anything at this point. So I put in the call. He shows that he had five six, so he had a pair of fives. Turned his hand into a bluff when the fourth heart came on the river. And uh, that is that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel grow. And uh, it was a wild, wild day. Got a lot of big hands and could not seem to put anything together. Missed a lot of flops and uh, got kind of buried there for a while. Made some bad plays. But I ended up getting that bluff through, which was like the key to the day. If I end up losing on that one, it could have got really ugly. I hope you guys also enjoyed the fact of seeing uh, a poker hand through the uh, viewpoint of two players. Um, 
Kenny was kind enough to post on his channel uh, this particular hand, and uh, I felt it was a, a very good aspect to show to you guys. And if you enjoyed that and would like to see more of his stuff, uh, you know where to find him. Check out his Instagram account. Uh, he told me that he is planning on doing a YouTube vlog here shortly. So when he does, I uh, recommend you follow him because uh, he has some interesting plays and I like the way he thinks. Anyway, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys run good. And until then, I'll see you soon.